After leaving Paris, our next stop with bus about was Bruges. However, en route to our destination, we made a surprise stop at Vimy Ridge. The Battle of Vimy Ridge was fought during the First World War, where Canadian troops played an important role in capturing German-held ground. Today, there's a memorial with a statue of Mother Canada weeping over the lost soldiers. Well, hello and welcome to Bruges. We are excited to explore the city. We just got here in the afternoon. The light is perfect, the day is beautiful, and we're gonna go explore and see what the city is all about. Once in Bruges, we set off to see the old town. We watched horse-drawn carriages roll down the square, admired the buildings, and visited chocolate shops because if there's one thing you have to do in Belgium, it's sample all their delicious chocolate. Good morning, it is the start of day two here in Bruges, so we're going to continue sightseeing. I think the first order of business is to try and find a boat so we can take a little tour down the canals, and maybe after that we'll start thinking about food. I know there's a few Belgian dishes that we're itching to try, so let's get started with the day. We started off the morning with a cruise down the canals. Like many cities in Europe, Bruges too has earned the nickname the Venice of the North due to the numerous waterways that run through the city. It was a great way to get a closer look at the city and it didn't hurt that we had swans to keep us company. The boat trip helped build up our appetite, so our next logical stop was a little shop specializing in fries. The Belgians assert that they invented fries and not the French, so we ordered a plateful with mayonnaise and curry ketchup. After eating lunch, we continued exploring the town on foot, and then it was time for dessert. Waffles! Waffles! We are having waffles! <laughs> What do you get when you have a major sweet tooth if not Belgian waffles doused in chocolate syrup and whipped cream? Delicious! So this is completely unplanned, but we just found out we are in town during this crazy music and dance festival. So we've been handed a flyer and there's a whole bunch of different workshops happening. You can learn to break dance, dance the Charleston, you can go to different concerts. So we're going to be spending the evening here in the town just checking it out and visiting the various stages. The Benevirk Festival was the best surprise of them all. The silent disco was our personal favorite. Everyone wore headphones and there were two dueling DJs, so you could switch frequencies and decide who you wanted to listen to. After showing off our best dance moves, <coughs> we spent the rest of the evening checking out the different stages at the festival. And that's a wrap for a short but sweet visit to Bruges. Next up, Amsterdam. So we have a very exciting taste test coming up today. We are in Bruges, Belgium, and that means we have to try Belgian fries, not French fries. So let's get a look at that, and then I'm gonna give you a bit of the history behind it. heated debate about whether fries are French fries or Belgian fries. Where exactly did they originate? So our tour guide yesterday was telling us that apparently during World War I there were a lot of British and American soldiers who were like between Belgium and France and sometimes they didn't know what country they were in. All they knew is that they could hear French being spoken so they assumed we must be in France, these must be French fries and that's how French fries got their name but the Belgians believe they were the first to invent this dish and therefore it should be called Belgian fries. I don't really care if they are French or Belgian, all I know is that they are delicious. So I'm ready to dig into my lunch. Mmm, so, so good. Okay, so tell us about the dressings on these frites. So over here, the main dressing is mayonnaise, if you can mm -hmm. believe it, and check out that enormous, Very generous amount of mayo, portion of mayo, 
<laughs> and then the, what, the other sauce that we got over here is curry ketchup. And what's really cool is when you go to these, these frites stores, these uh, french fry stores, you have all different kinds of sauces you can choose from. There's like maybe 20 different kinds. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay for them, but hey, it's good. So let's go in for a bite. All right, I'm taking a curry ketchup and I am dunking it into the mayonnaise. Ooh, like adventurous. Double sauce adventure. Wow. Yeah, that's... It's like taking french fries to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. And something that's really neat about these fries is that they're a thicker cut than what we're used to having. Okay, we're really bad for devouring food, but I think this like breaks a new record. Um, these were done in like, what, 20, 30, 40 seconds, seconds as seconds. opposed to minutes. <laughs> it was so good. I'm so sad that we finished it so quickly. <laughs> um, but my favorite sauce, definitely the curry ketchup. I know that's not traditionally Belgian, but I tried it the first time when I had currywurst in Berlin, and it's so nice having ketchup with curry, and I love it with my fries, so I recommend trying that if you get the chance. Yeah, I have to agree with you, but they also taste really good mixed together as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so price point. How much can we expect to pay for these delicious fries? <laughs> so we got a medium portion, and we paid about 350 euros, mm -hmm. but if you get a large, you can expect to pay maybe four, and if you get a small, you can expect to pay about two. Another thing to keep in mind is these shops are all over the city. All you have to do is look for the french fry symbol. On the maps. The maps show you where to get fries. time for our last taste test here in Belgium so we stopped by a chocolate shop to pick up some handmade chocolates and the Belgians actually used to have a colony in Africa so that meant cocoa beans and they had plenty of time to perfect the art of chocolate making so that means today they are some of the leading experts in chocolate production so today is a chocolate taste test all the chocolates we have purchased. We only have nine and we are two people, so that might be a bit of an issue. We'll see who gets number nine. And also, we're actually doing this taste test at a local park that has sheep. So if you hear baaing in the background, that's them, not us. Wait a minute, that's actually not true. Sometimes it is us. Let's hear your baaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Okay. Oh wow. This has like um. This is this the one that you wanted? It's got a fruit flavored oh jam. God. Strawberry jam. And you didn't, <laughs> even, you didn't even bite it in half to share. There you go. <laughs> I win, you lose. It's so sad. So I'm going for a white chocolate here. I don't know what that is. Can you guess? It's not coffee. Maybe it's praline. It might be praline. Okay, yeah, I've got one that's shaped like a leaf now. Mm. It's all over your lips. It's not mint. Again, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what this is. I, it's got kind of a... Coconut? No, it's not coconut. I would say it's more of um It's got a, a bit of a, a fruity taste. I'm saying it's going to be like a peach cream. Mm. It's different, but good. So this is going to be my first dark chocolate. I'm usually not a fan, but this one looks really pretty. And it's got the city's main attraction painted in gold. There's the bell tower. something in it. I think that's marzipan. Probably. Mm -hmm. We've been noticing a lot of marzipan chocolate around. Oh. And it has that nasty dried fruit that they put in that Christmas cake. <laughs> oh, I oh. love that. I love that stuff. That's like old lady candy. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Since we kind of have a hard time sharing, we're going to do what? Rock, paper, scissor. Okay, get your hand out. Rock, paper, scissor. Oh. Rock, Hi, paper, Bob. scissor. Oh. Oh. Get the you know what? I'm gonna share it though. <laughs> because <laughs> I have to put up with you after this. No, you're probably just full. <laughs> You've had too much chocolate. That's why you're willing to share. That's what it is. Okay, last one. Mm. That's white chocolate with cream. Mm. Mm. What a cream. I'm gonna have a little bit of cookie. Yum. And because I'm such a nice guy, a nice hubby, leaving half of it for you. Mm. That's nice. Thank you, darling. So there's just something about European chocolate that sets it apart from any other chocolate I've had elsewhere. Belgium chocolate is no different and it's just absolutely amazing. It's so milky, it's so creamy, there's so many different flavors, and it's gonna be hard to have a normal chocolate bar after this. Price point! Okay, so for these handmade chocolates, and we got nine little chocolates, we paid three euros and 95 cents, which I think is a pretty good price because it wasn't a touristy part of town, and I mean, these are outstanding chocolates. So keep that in mind, and if you're ever in Bruges, get yourself some chocolates. Waffles, waffles, we are having waffles. <laughs> Today is our last full day in Belgium. We couldn't leave the country without trying at least one Belgian waffle. And to prove its authenticity, it even has a Belgian flag. Why do you Would take you out that flag that? and wave, wave it? <laughs> Come on, wave it. Wave the flag? Wave that flag. Belgian waffles, dun 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 dun. Belgian waffles, dun 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 dun. The funny thing about Belgian waffles is that there is no such thing as Belgian waffles in Belgium. Sure, in North America we call them Belgian waffles, but here they are just regular old waffles. And that's only because we have crappy waffles. Yes, we have to put them in the toaster. We usually buy them from the frozen section in Canada. But anyway, what sets these waffles apart is that they are a lot larger, a lot fluffier, and the squares are a lot bigger than your average waffles that you buy from the frozen section back in North America. So let's dig in before this starts melting. First bite! Okay, so we got ours with chocolate sauce and whipped cream. Ooh. This is like technically our dinner, isn't it? Wow. Wow. Tell me how good that is. 
That is so good, I have no words, so I'm just gonna take a second bite. And leave me less. Mmm. Mmm. I don't even know where to begin, like. It's amazing, it's a proper waffle, guys, with lots of chocolate sauce, lots of whipped cream, nice and sweet. Yes. Oh. You want a flyer? And what did you just get handed? We've just been invited to a special event tonight. There's some kind of festival and there's going to be a clubbing stage, guys. So we're going to eat our waffle first and then have energy to go clubbing, apparently. <laughs> All right, I haven't been left with much, but I guess I'll take whatever it is that there is left. Chocolate sauce and whipping cream is a winning combo. And you're right, those are freshly made waffles done properly. How can I eat the stuff back home after this? So, what are the different toppings you can get on these waffles? Lots of different toppings. You can get strawberries, wild berries, there was icing sugar, even butter. So, I mean, <laughs> there's something for every taste out there. Pure butter. Yes, but I'm happy with chocolate. So price point for the waffle. So in terms of this waffle, it was 450 euro. Not exactly the cheapest snack, but definitely delicious. 